Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, Station, ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control. Houston, please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, have you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hi, I'm Janice Holton, Administrator of Thales Academy in Raleigh, North Carolina, where our mission is to develop classical thinkers and future leaders. Our school is named after Thales of Miletus, an ancient Greek philosopher who is known for his contributions to mathematics and astronomy. We want to thank NASA for this incredible opportunity for our students to interact with astronauts on board the International Space Station. And now, here is our first question. Hi, my name is Garrett. How do spacesuits generate oxygen? Hi, Garrett, and hello to, to everyone at Thales Academy. Uh, welcome to the International Space Station. So currently, our spacesuits that we have on board, called the EMUs, Extravehicular Mobility Units, have tanks with oxygen in them. So the suits themselves aren't generating the oxygen. There's a primary tank and a secondary tank. And the primary tank, uh, we can basically connect an umbilical to station, and that will refill that tank with oxygen. And the secondary tank that is for backup, and normally we don't expect to use those uh, on a normal spacewalk, um, those have to be sent down to the ground uh, to be filled with oxygen again. Hi, my name is Estelle, and I would like to know, do you have plants in outer space to help with the oxygen? Estelle, uh, that's a great question. Also, uh, that's my daughter's name, so I love it. Um, so plants are extremely important and something we're studying. Actually, right now, uh, we have had several different experiments uh, on the International Space Station. Um, right now, we're doing the plant habitat growing tomatoes uh, to figure out how we can um, produce more plants um, both for oxygen and also potentially uh, for consumption purposes so we can eat them. And so that's something we're studying different methods of uh, what's the best way to water plants, uh, especially in this weightless environment where it's not as easy for the soil to just, you know, be pulled down by gravity and then the water to go towards the roots. Um, so we're definitely looking at that and it, and it would be very important. Hi, I'm Christopher. Do you get a head rush when you flip upside down? All right, Christopher, so no, there is really no upside down uh, in space. This feels the same to me as it does when I was the other way around when you first saw me um, because we're weightless up here. So any direction we go to, feels the same to us. Nothing's pulling towards our feet like it would uh, back on Earth. So on Earth, if you went upside down, gravity would be pulling towards your head. But up here, there's, no, uh, there's nothing doing that. Hi, my name is William, and I would like to ask a question. How does it smell in space? William, it depends who you ask. I've heard different people say different things. Here on the space station itself, it smells uh, much like it, it would on Earth based on what's in each module. Uh, for example, where we eat smells like whatever we're eating at that moment. Uh, the module where we store our trash doesn't smell so great. But when you actually open the door to go for a spacewalk, um, different people have said different things. And I'd say the most common thing uh, I've heard is that people associate with a metallic smell. So uh, space smells metallic. Hi, my name is Karen. What's the hardest thing to do in space? Kayla, I'd say 
for me so far, one of the hardest single things I've done has been going on a spacewalk. Um, inside the spacesuit, uh, there's pressure. So every time you want to use your hands, you're fighting against that pressure, which we need to keep us alive. And so it's really physically uh, tiring and also um, just mentally exhausting because you're out there exposed in space. But then just on a daily basis here on the space station, I'd say the hardest thing is not losing something. If you leave something floating for a second and look away, it might not be there when you turn back around and it's a pretty big space station, so it's hard to find things. Hi, my name is Adeline and what do you eat? Adeline, we have a menu of, I think, over 200 different things for us to eat, from vegetables and soups to meats and sides. Um, we basically have uh, two different types of food, foods that are sent up in these green packets where they're shelf stable and we can just put them in a food warmer. They're already pre-cooked, so we just need to heat them up. Uh, and then we eat them directly like that. And then we have packets that are white that are rehydratable. So the water's been pulled out of them and we add the water back in and then again, just let them heat up uh, and eat them like that. So all sorts, of, uh, all sorts of different foods on the space station. Hi, my name is Jasmine. How do you have fun in space? Gavin, uh, I like your style. It's definitely important to have fun up here, especially when we're up here for these long duration missions. I'll be up here for about six months, so it's important to have fun. We like to hang out as a crew. Uh, often we uh, share a meal together around the uh, galley table. I like to go out to the, uh, it's called the cupola and it's our window to earth. And I like to look out that back at our beautiful planet and take some pictures sometimes. We even have some musical instruments up here. We have a guitar and a keyboard. Uh, and then sometimes I just like to write or read books. So a lot of things that I also would do back home for fun. Hi, my name is Shiloh. What's the coolest thing you've seen outside your window? Shiloh, that's really tough. Uh, pretty much every single time I look out the window, I see something amazing or beautiful. And because uh, the weather is constantly changing, the areas of Earth we're traveling over are constantly changing, the lighting is changing, the cloud coverage, uh, the water conditions, all those things are changing over time. So every time it's a little different. Some of my favorite things to see out the window are auroras. We see some amazing auroras from up here. Uh, and also uh, just different geological features like the eye of the Sahara. And it's amazing. You can see it so clearly from, from this uh, vantage point. Hello, my name is Wyland. And my question is, is there air conditioning and heat in space? We do. We, uh, we control the, the temperature up here and, you know, we basically use heat exchange systems. So we'll take our air and run it past um, water that's, uh, that's gone outside the space station and been cooled. And so that'll make it colder. And then we, we decide how much of that colder air do we want to mix in with warmer air. And so we can adjust the temperature up and down um, by using that and really in practice, how we do it up here is we ask ground to control it. So we'll call down and say, hey, we're a little bit cold. Can you increase the temperature one degree? Or, hey, we're a little bit hot. Can you cool it down by one degree? And, and that's uh, on a daily basis. That's what we do. We'll just call down to ground and ask them to change the temperature. Hi, I'm Zena. Hi, I'm Osman. How to be weightless? How does it feel to be weightless? Yeah. Uh, it is about the coolest thing. So I can, I can just float around. I can fly through station. Um, I can flip up onto the ceiling whenever I want. So I feel like a superhero. I'd say the only thing that, that is a little challenging is objects float too. So when I'm trying to 
uh, pack a bag full of stuff, it's really hard because they all want to float out and, and come out of that bag. And as I said earlier, uh, if you if you just leave something for a second and look away, it might float away. And so that's something that's difficult about being in this weightless environment. But actually floating uh, myself uh, feels just like the dreams I had when I was a kid where I could fly and float around. Hi, my name is Carter, and does anything hit the space station? Carter, we do have things hit the space station from time to time. Thankfully, any larger objects are tracked by a team on the ground, and if there is a large object coming towards us uh, or anything that would do significant damage, uh, we'll, we'll do either a reboost or change our orbit so that we avoid uh, that debris. However, sometimes really small micrometeoroid debris will hit the station, and for example, when you know, I went out on the spacewalk, you can see little impact points uh, from micrometeoroid de debris on the handrails and parts of the outside of the station. Hi, my name is Rohan, and I'd like to know if sleeping in spaces messes with your circadian rhythm. Rahan, so you may or may not know this, every single day we go around the Earth 16 times, which means we're seeing uh, that many sunrises and sunsets. And as you probably know, uh, light and darkness have a large impact on our circadian rhythm. So what we do up here to help mitigate that uh, messing up our sleep cycle is we use the lights on board station. So when it is nighttime, we'll close the shutters so that light from outside isn't coming in. And we've got different settings on our lights. So we'll basically dim the lights or turn them off completely so that it feels dark and it feels like night to our bodies. And then during the day, we'll turn those lights up bright and we'll, we'll open the shutters whenever we want so that we'll get that uh, daylight when it comes and just the light from station. So we try to, to help regulate that uh, through the lights. My name is Austin, and how, how long does it prepare to take a spacewalk? Austin, so I started training for spacewalks when I first got to NASA about six years ago. Um, so I've been training for a long time to do spacewalks. And then when we get to uh, a specific mission or spacewalk we need to do, for that, we'll start studying those procedures um, at least usually a month in advance. And then on top of knowing what we're doing, we have to get all our hardware, our spacesuits, our tools ready. So it's a several week long process to prepare for each specific EVA. And then after the fact, reconfigure everything uh, and break it back down. Hi, my name is Kennedy. What happens? to the trash that you make in space. Kennedy, that's a really good question because we we do generate a lot of trash up here and we can't just walk outside and, and take the trash out like you would back home. So we gather all that trash and we separate it. We separate different types of trash, wet trash, dry trash, uh, and all sorts of things. And then we have cargo vehicles that come up. So one of the cargo vehicles is a Cygnus, and when that leaves space station, it actually burns up in the atmosphere. So we'll put all our trash, we'll pack it as tight as we can, and it's kind of like playing a game of Tetris uh, to try and get as much in there as you can. And then that will leave station and burn up in the atmosphere. Hi, I'm Gabe, and how do you celebrate holidays and other events on the space station? Gabe, we've been doing a lot of holiday celebrating up here since uh, we just went through the holiday season. Uh, much like uh, it often does back home, it, in, it involves a lot of eating and, and hanging out with each other uh, as a crew. So we'll usually gather around the table, either uh, in node one or uh, in the service module in the Russian segment. And all seven of us will get together and share sometimes traditional foods for that holiday and different traditions as well. For example, we, you know, decorated uh, for Christmas and for New Year's and for Hanukkah and just things to make us feel like we're back home. 
Hi, I'm Sutteri, and I would like to learn how you stretch in outer space. Yeah, stretching is uh, definitely very important. Um, I, before my uh, workout every day, so we work out every single day up here, uh, my favorite spot to stretch is actually right in front of the cupola windows. And, you know, it's, usually I have to do some combination of putting my foot in footrest and holding onto handrails to get into the different positions I need to get in. We also have bands similar to what you would use on, on Earth, the, the stretch bands, and I'll use that as well to, to help me stretch out. But it's very important up here because we work out every single day. So if you don't stretch, you start to feel it after a while. Hi, I'm Charlie. How do you not blow the way on a spacewalk? Charlie, of all the important things we do on a spacewalk, not floating away is the most important one. And we use several tethers and we practice and train so that we don't float away. So first off, the first thing we do uh, when we start a spacewalk is we put down a safety tether and we make sure that's connected to us and uh, and fully locked and so that will stay on all the way until the end of the spacewalk then throughout the spacewalk as we get to each site we'll put down another tether that just keeps us in that local area and every time we move we'll lift that move and then put down a new local tether and then our last resort is we actually have, it's called a safer, it's like a little jet pack. If you do get completely detached, that's your last resort to try and get you back onto station. Hi, I'm Anderson, what's your favorite space food? Oh, favorite space food. That has changed over time, I'd say uh, right now, I'm kind of on a kick with, we have these uh, rehydratable beef patties. So you add water to them, and it's kind of like a hamburger patty that's cut in half into two pieces. And then we have wheat flat bread. So it's a piece of bread that uh, doesn't generate a lot of crumbs. And I'll put those together and make what I call a space hamburger. Greetings. I'm um, Bob Luddy, founder of the Thales Academy. Our students are very excited to have the opportunity to ask questions to you astronauts who have extraordinarily skills and courage and a great influence on our school. Thank you. And thank you so much. Uh, I appreciated all your great questions. I hope you enjoyed your time aboard the International Space Station. Have a great day. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event.